Lloyd Nicholas Lewis is a lawyer, business person, proud grandmother, um, and uh, chair of the Reginald Lewis Foundation, named after her late husband, um, the entrepreneur Reginald Lewis. Um, she's back in the day from between 1972 and 1979, she published the New York based Nina Skugon or Brush Fire, an anti Marcos monthly magazine for which she and her staff were blacklisted by the Philippine government. I would like to answer the question, why is there another Marcos running for president after what happened in 1986? So I attribute this phenomenon to three things. First, forgiveness by Tita Cori. Second, change in the population of the Philippines after 30 years. And third, the evil of unmitigated corruption, shameless falsehood. Treachery in favor of China, they are now united under Marcos Jr. So first, forgiveness by President Cory Aquino. On November 4, 1991, Imelda Marcos and her children were allowed to return to the Philippines by President Cory Aquino after their living in exile in Hawaii for more than five years to face charges of fraud and corruption. It took 17 years from January 2000 to November 9, 2018, when the Sandigan Bayan convicted Mrs. Marcos for creating private foundations in Switzerland and other places during the time of martial law to deposit illegally government funds. She was sentenced to 42 years, but because she was, quote, advancing years, she never served the sentence. Mrs. Marcos filed an appeal to the Supreme Court and after nearly three and a half years, no action on the part of the Supreme Court. In the United States though, the US Court of Appeals of the Ninth District in October 24, 2012, convicted her of stolen wealth from the country and ordered her to pay 353 Six three hundred fifty three million dollars, which includes interest and penalties, and she was she has not paid a single dollar, and she's given up to twenty thirty five to pay it up. In the meantime, Marcus Jr. was convicted of non-payment of income tax from nineteen eighty two to nineteen eighty five when he was vice governor and governor of Ilocos Norte. Up to now. He has not paid a single tax. So that's what happened. They're here. The second phenomenon, change in the population from 1986 people power to 2022. The population of the Philippines grew from 56 million in 1986 to 112 million this year. So 50% of this population is under 40 years old. So 65 million are registered for 2022. The 6 million new voters are mostly the young. And so where is the attention of these young people? Four hours a day are spent on their device, cell phone, where 85% of those who own a device are on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. They never experienced the, club, the kleptocracy of those 21 years of martial law, where people's job got less money or no jobs at all, where Filipinos began to work overseas to better their economic conditions, where 70,000 were imprisoned politi as political prisoners, 34,000 were tortured, 3,200 were killed, and this is according to the Amnesty International. The poor got poorer, and the Marcus family and his cronies got richer and enjoyed a lavish lifestyle. Most of all, while 40% of the Filipino people were going hungry, eating once a day or maybe not at all, where Smoky Mountain of trash signified, signified the des desperate status of the people, Marcos deposited in foreign banks $10 billion and tons of gold 
stolen from central bank. Under the Marcos regime, the country's foreign debt skyrocketed from $600 million in 1966 when he came into power to $27 billion in, $9 in 1986. The third, the evil of unmitigated corruption, shameless falsehood, treachery for China are now united under Marcos Jr. So when Marcos Jr. was defeated by the Congresswoman, widow of the beloved mayor of Naga, Lenny Robredo, the Marcos family continued with a vengeance their systematic campaign to propagate another universe that the Marcos martial law years were the quote, golden years of Philippine history. They hired Cambridge Analytica to target these young Filipinos in their electronic device and fed them day in and day out lies, distorted history, false claims that Farkas Jr. And had an educational achievement uh, in, in, um, came in, in, in Oxford, that the laws he passed were authored by him, windmills in the north, oh, in uh, Kalimis, in, Windmills in the north of Luzon was initiated by them. They are all lies. But following Hitler's propaganda chief, Joseph Goebbels, who said, repeat the lie 10,000 times and it becomes the truth. Actually, Ma Imelda Marcos repeated the same thing when she said, perception is real, truth is not. And so with their nefarious plan intact, the unsuspecting Filipinos took that false history book, look, hook, line, and sinker. And to add to the tragedy, Duterte's daughter, Sara, has agreed to be Marcos Jr.'s vice president. So her 25% in the polls added to Marcos 25%, his numbers shot up to 50%. If election were held now, now China has come into the shores not only at the West Philippine Sea, but Marcos Jr. himself has gone with Xi Jinping in Beijing. And so he said, I would set aside the landmark 2016 decision of the International Tribunal to, that, we, that favored the Philippines over China. And so that's a whole amount of money coming from China. And that in short is the reason why a Marcos Jr. is on the front runner of the 2022 national elections after the people power of 1986. But my last word is, in the end, I have faith in the Filipino people, but it is our job, those of us who know better, to tell the truth to our people. And so come 20, May 20, 2022, Lenny will win. Thank you.